Hello trumpet players, today I want to talk about the relationship between exercises and music. And the way I like to put this is I normally say that all physical and technical work should be done for musical reasons. So it wasn't long into my career when I started noticing, not just for myself, and in fact more with students and other people, other trumpet players, I started noticing some very bizarre stuff. Bizarre. Strange. And I'm, I'm the kind of guy that likes to think about this stuff, analyze it, categorize it, uh, systemify it. I just made that up. But yeah, I, I like to study these things and figure out what's going on. And I made a discovery, and this was back in the early 90s, I made a discovery. It depends on where you put your mind. What are you thinking about? So I said in the introduction that all, all technical and physical work should be done for musical reasons. So let me ask you, when you're playing your long tones, why are you playing your long tones? Think about that. And a lot of people will say, so I can get a better tone. Well, how do you know you're getting a, be a better tone? You are getting a better tone on the long tones. No, 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 that's not good. That's horrible, okay? Uh, you ever heard that old phrase, the blind leading the blind? Well, this is sort of kind of like that, except we're not talking about another person. We're talking about where your emphasis lies, okay? We're looking at following something that isn't going where you want to go. All right, so for example, when you work on range, you work on, so, and you know, I think most of you know already, I don't do high note exercises. I don't believe in getting your range like that. I believe in getting range by increasing the, the, the boundaries of what you do, and that may sound on the surface like it's the same thing, but it's not. But anyway, but for those of you who do range exercises, you do them, you get higher, and you think to yourself, look how high I played. Wrong. Doesn't work like that. Same thing with triple tongue. You do your triple tongue exercise. Wow, golly, look at the way I just played. Wrong, 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 wrong. When you're doing your exercises, scales, long tones, slip slurs, um, buzzing exercises, um, and I'm going to come back to the buzzing because this is one that's been recent, okay? All of the exercises that you do are supposed to be done for one reason. Results that you want to get in your music. If you let your results on the exercises guide you in the direction that the exercises will take you, you will end up in a very bizarre, strange, crazy place in your music. When you do your exercises for musical reasons, everything changes. Let that sink in. So how does that work? So one of the, one of the ways that it works is, you know, when you're doing the long tones, You don't stress over how perfect they are right now. You don't stress over that. Yes, we want to strive to be as good as we can be. Uh, well, yes, we want to hold ourselves to a standard. But we also want to move on too. And, and that's where people break down. That's where all of this breaks down. Is there are people who will spend, and I'm not exaggerating, there are people who will spend the entire afternoon 
or even a whole day on that one on the long tones because they're trying to get the long tones to be perfect. That is effort that is misspent. You're 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 putting your energies in the wrong direction. The reason we do the long tones is to make our sound on the music better. Long tones have an effect on our playing. Just by doing them, our musicianship changes. So we do the long tones so that when we perform, those benefits be come through our musicianship. And it's the same for every single one of the exercises that we do. And I said I was going to come back to buzzing. Because of my buzzing video that I've put up, you can't believe how many people have contacted me with an urgent plea. How do I make my lip buzz better? And I don't... I don't want to offend anybody, okay? But that's evidence that your mind is in the wrong place. You don't make your lip buzz better. You just do the lip buzz. Okay? And if it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't come out, move on. That's not what we're here for. We're not. Okay? So, and, I, and I know. I know that already that there's a lot of trumpet players who, go, who are going to disagree with me on that. But this isn't something I just thought about two days ago. This is something I've, I discovered over two decades ago, almost three decades ago, and I've been living it and teaching it. So yes, I know there's people out there who disagree with me that the, that the exercises must be perfect. I disagree with that. I think you do the exercises because there's going to be benefit to doing the exercises. I do believe that we should hold ourselves to a standard, but that doesn't mean that you stress, that you dwell, that you um, get obsessed with those exercises. Those exercises are just a tool. So yes, if you have a bad day on your long tones and everything's fuzzy or whatever, that's, you, you, you make a mental note to yourself, that was horrible, maybe tomorrow will be better. But you don't sit and do them over and over and over again until you get it right. That time is better spent on your music. Alright, so yes, I believe that every exercise that we do, and it's, it's not so much. So yes, I do teach the 50% rule. And if you're not doing the 50% rule, then you, there, you already have problems with your playing. And then people will say, well, Mr. Lewis, I'm an exception. You probably aren't. And we can talk about that if you want. If, you, if you're a great player and you only practice exercises, I can probably figure out why that's working. Okay? Um, but, for, but for most people, and I'm not saying that's an exception for you, you are not an exception. I think there are times when we get our, our, our music time, let's say if you're playing in ensembles all the time and the only time you have the practice is on... You spend it on exercises. That's almost okay. That's not ideal. But that's almost okay. And you can grow and become a great player that way. It's not ideal. If you want to be the best player that you can be. If you're one of those that say I'm an exception. I only ever practice exercises. You could be an even better player. If you spent time practicing music. Anyway, so my point is. Yes, I do teach the 50% rule, but this is not about, oh, and the, oh, by the way, the 50% rule is about making sure that at least half of your time is spent practicing music, okay? But this video, this topic is not about that. This topic is about where is your head? What are you thinking? Because a lot of people get in this, you know, I love to use the word recursive. They use it in programming. I do a little bit of Amateur programming on the side. Not as much as I like, but I, I, I do spend some time 
um, programming. And there's this term that we use in the programming world called recursive. That's when the program calls itself, when a function calls itself, okay? And it's a great way to describe what happens when you take the music out of the, out of the equation for your rudiments. Your rudiments become recursive. In other words, you're, you're growing them in on, the, on themselves instead of aiming them at a, a non-exercise objective. Does that make sense? So uh, when it's recursive, you're trying to get better at long tones. You're trying to get better at lip slurs, at lip buzz, at uh, finger technique, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. You're, tr you're trying to do that for its own sake. And that's what creates those bizarre results that I was talking about earlier. Okay. Um, I, I'm looking up at the clock. I almost, I only have like a few minutes left. Let me finish this up. So we were talking about the people who do lip buzz. They're panicking because they can't get a good lip buzz. That's because their he head is wrapped up in the lip buzz. Get your head wrapped up into the music. When you're, every exercise you do, be concentrating on what is this going to do for my music. You know, you can get a bad sound, and this is hypothetical. You can get a bad sound on your long tones, and it'll still have a positive effect on your music. It's possible. Okay? We don't want that. That's not ideal. But on the days that you... Practice your long tones, and maybe you had a rough night the night before, um, playing the you know rough like a gig night or whatever. There are times when the 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 long tones aren't going to be as nice as other days. Get through it, move on, so you can practice your music. And I promise you, see the problem with the recursive the recursive practice is that it's hard to get out of that loop. And in fact, I have seen, and I'm not exaggerating, I have seen this destroy people's trumpet careers. I'm not going to give exact names or examples. Trust me, I've seen it. See, one of the things about being a known as someone who can help you with this kind of stuff, like chops and stuff like that, um is that people come to you when they're on their last leg. They, they, they're, they, they're, they're about to, you know, put the horn away. And they, they find you as a trumpet player who can help people with stuff like that. And they come to you desperate and they say, please help me. And there have been some people who, because it's not, you know, this thing with the, the recursive stuff, it's not just physical. It does something to really mess up your head. So, and sometimes coming out of that, sometimes the people that come to me, it's just too late. Not too late physically. Too late mentally. They come to me when it's, when there's the, the where the place that their mind is in, they can't, come out of that you know it's sort of like a, since i'm using the analogy of programming it's sort of like a stack overflow if though for those of you who who know anything about programming when you do a recursive thing um there's the possibility that's why they have things built into it there's a possibility of running out of all your memory all of your um your um ram and it'll shut down your computer because you've just, you crashed the whole thing. And, and, and thinking of the exercises as being recursive, if your mind is on the exercises instead of on the music while you're doing the exercises, it can, I'm not saying it always does, but it can lead to a complete shutdown. So that's why I always teach all Technical and physical work should be done for musical reasons. All right, I got a student right at the door. I better let you go. So, God bless you. We'll see you on the next video.